and y'all, it looks like the show has gone to the dogs. Dawn, will you tell us a little bit about the puppy you're holding? This is River. He's the little boy that we just got this weekend. And River is how old? He is 10 weeks old now. 10 weeks old, and Ellie is 14 weeks old. 14 and weeks Ellie old. thinks she's going to run the show. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She Definitely. thinks she's going to run the show. Now, we have to share that these two dogs came into your life because um, you lost Misha. Yeah. And Misha was the baby. She was your sister's dog. And when your sister went to be with the Lord, then Misha came to be with you. Right. For four years, she was my sidekick. She went everywhere I did. And went fishing with me and Lonnie all the time. She was our little boating dog. Yeah. So, yeah. A happy, happy time for y'all. And then suddenly, suddenly, she left. And, and from that came this joy. And I remember the moment you showed up with Ellie Mae. <laughs> Vicki was there and I was there. We were sitting in my kitchen floor. And this dog just took over. Right. Immediately, from the minute she got there, she was part of family. Oh, yeah. And I think that's what they become. They she quickly become part of family. She immediately, it's like, I told, I told Lonnie when we first got her, I said, she don't never talk about them people where she was, so I just, she was meant for us. That's right. He just looked at me That's funny. Right. I said, well, she never talks about those other people. I and this it. one kind of seemed a little bit homesick the first couple of days. Like, he missed his family, mm -hmm. his first family. Uh-huh. But, but now he's good. But yeah, he's got Ellie Mays, his little sister now, or his big sister, because she's yeah. a few weeks older than right, him. Right, right. And and we have to say Look how perfect she's been. She's perfect. They're here today because they're <laughs> on the way to herself. see Dr. Mitchell. Right. Up at the the Copper wonderful Basin. Copper Basin Vet Clinic. What great people. Yes. They help so many people who save and rescue dogs. They help people to make neutering and spaying affordable. Right. They do everything they can to make your pet's life and your life affordable and doable right and i think that's something we wanted to, we wanted to just say thank you to them today oh, because yes. without dr mitchell and and honestly um you know when we look at our dog's health we want them to be here as long as they can possibly be here oh yes and their life expectancy isn't you know most of the time 12 years 13 years and you'll laugh about this but last night we watched videos of gizmo diana duchess wow. shy uh jazz bandit sugar all the dogs did you think of the other dog's name molly yeah. molly was it molly molly uh, and you named I her. Remember that. And you named her. All the dogs that were in our home became part of our family. Oh, yeah. And at that time, we had a wonderful vet here in LJ. Dr. Hal Stoltz was our vet. And I told everybody, I put his children through college. I paid for all his kids' <laughs> weddings. I, you know, we we wanted to take care of our animals because they are part of family. And I right. think that's what you need to encourage. If you have an outdoor dog, still make him part of your family. You know, oh, yeah. um, these babies are indoor dogs and will always be. In and the bed rotten. with me dogs. Yeah, they're in the bed <laughs> with me dogs, okay. Yeah. And y'all actually, uh, on your way to Dr. Mitchell's, you came by to bring a pound cake to somebody pretty special. Yes, Freddie's birthday. <laughs> Freddie's birthday was yesterday, and he's yep. getting a Dawn pound cake. And he's so excited because now he can just snack on that for the next few days. All you know, those storms make me nervous, so when I'm nervous, I cook. So I ended up making two pound cakes <laughs> yesterday. A Freddie cake and a Lonnie cake. I was so. eating pound cake at midnight last night. <laughs> I oh, this love is it. not good. I love it. Well, we've been talking a lot about um, family and importance, and, and I want to share something. Can you kind of tell folks what's happened in the honor that Lonnie got recently? Which one? About the magazine? About the magazine, yeah. What's the name of it? Outdoor? Outdoor Living, is it? Outdoor Life? Outdoor is it Life. Outdoor Life? Oh, I don't remember, but the... Um, what is it when people interview you? What are they called? The reporter. The reporter, he, the guy that's doing the story on Lonnie, he actually said he got more information from Lonnie than about catfishing and the way to catch him and stuff that he had ever gotten. And that's what he does, mm -hmm. is he finds out ha different species of fish from bass to catfish to walleye to w whatever all the names are, crappie. Right. Crappy, we say crappy. We say crappy. Yeah. So there do, there's four different guys doing stories on different, like there's a guy doing a story about bass fishing and and another one doing one for crappy and then Lonnie is representing the catfish. Right. 
So it's going to be a big, huge article in that magazine, and he, he's actually, Lonnie's going to be the first. Mm -hmm. the, you know, he's going to be put first. And he is the, the catfish lineup. champion of the year. He is the catfish king. He is, he is. <laughs> and he won the world championship for yeah. 2016. Him and my son, David Bruce, they yeah. won that. So and they he got, got the a belt, belt that he'd been trophy. chasing for 15 years. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes he'll put that belt on and just walk around in the house. It's so funny because it looks like a belt that a wrestler would get. Right. And to see little old Lonnie Fountain, little tiny thing, running around with that big old huge he belt. He's so proud it. of that belt. <laughs> It's crazy. He loves it. Is it. Crazy. We have two tournaments this weekend, and actually, um, I think it's the first weekend in May. We do the United Special Sportsman's Alliance, um, the one at Gunnersville for right. the critically and special needs children. That's one of that's our favorite thing to do every year. Right. We do one there, and then Lonnie does the one at Wren Lake. Mm -hmm. That one's going to be changed up a little bit this year. It's in June. But he always takes them a fishing pole, mm -hmm. a rod and a reel, and he hands them out, him and his brother Donnie. Right. That's just what they do. In the last couple of years, Daily Walk Ministries has helped with the yeah, funding of those sure. fishing poles. But before, Lonnie and Donnie would work for a couple of weeks and put a little bit of money back every week, you mm -hmm, know, to be mm -hmm. able to go buy those for those right. kids. And you're talking about Lonnie fished with a child. I remember the first year, Lonnie couldn't tell the story without crying. Oh, yeah, it's because very emotional. Because it was a terminally ill child that Lonnie gave his first and probably last opportunity to fish. It's very and emotional. to think about that and what a difference he made in that kid's life, you right. know, it just, it blows my mind. Last year we had Misha with us and the little girl on our boat's name was Rachel and she mm -hmm. had Down syndrome and she was precious and she fell in love with Misha uh -huh. and that's what kept her calm. She didn't want to touch the fish. Yeah. She was okay with fishing but when the fish came in the boat she was like no <laughs> way. She, she like tried to it. hold it for a second and she just dropped it and yeah. she was like it was looking at me. Yeah. But yeah. Misha kept her so calm and that whole weekend she would walk Misha around the campgrounds and stuff. I've got some really neat videos of Rachel mm -hmm. with Misha because they bonded and it was so sweet to see that. Yeah, all those yeah. kids love to see a little dog. Yeah. So I guess these two will be going. These with us two this will year. be fishing now. But something you've learned about this breed and the black on them, having them in the sun is not good for them, is no, it? No, because they're actually a black dog. Right, with white markings. With is white that correct? markings. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But Miss Ellie May, I think she's adapted well, and I think Rivers adapted well yeah. to television. You think they'll be I our think next? little dog stars. They'll be our new <laughs> stars. So um, it's awesome. I love that you got to stop today on the way to Dr. Mitchell's and, and bring that know, pound cake. Bring that <laughs> pound cake, yeah. And tell him a big thank you to everybody because when, when you lost Misha, you kept I saying, tried, tried to get to his if office. I had gotten to Dr. Mitchell on time, if I had gotten to Dr. Mitchell on time, he's kind of like Dr. Berlin Harris who yes. pulls off some, some doggy miracles. Yes, and and I does. think there are some special vets out there, and he's one of those. He so saved her, I, th yeah. I think. Yeah. If she yeah. had a chance, he could have been a but but it's 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 his will, and and you've now replaced her with two. So, well, so she anyway. can never be replaced. No, no, that's that's <laughs> true. That's true because Misha was the baby. Yeah. Well, we're gonna but it helps. It does help. It does help. But we want to encourage you, if you don't have a pet and you're financially stable enough to do this, adopt. Please adopt. There's there so are many that need so adopt. many that need homes. So many that need homes. And I got tickled. I was up in Delana putting up real estate signs Sunday. And I pull up to put up a sign and this massive pit bull, just like yours that you were walking Saturday morning. Lucky. Just exactly. I thought it was lucky. Runs at me and I'm like, and I told the guy, I said, it's okay. I said, my daughter has a dog identical to that. As a matter of fact, it looks so much like Lucky. I thought it was Lucky. You know? like, How did you get to Delonica before I did? <laughs> but, but if you can adopt, if you can take on an animal that somebody else basically threw away, right. you know, do that. And or give can't that, take care of anymore. Yeah. Like my sister, she right. couldn't really take care of her animals anymore because she was in a financial spot. Right. But don't just leave them. You know, I watch all those dog shows and a lot of people, when they hit hard times and they move out of where Wherever they were renting because they couldn't pay rent, they'll leave their dog behind. Yes, yes. Because pit bulls and parolees, that program, they pick up a lot of dogs that have been left behind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's just sad. But there is a, there is a, angels among us. It's a little. Um, I think it may be in Alpharetta, it could be in Atlanta, I'm not sure, but they do some awesome things. They go to some of the shelters and pick up the dogs that are on the kill list. Mm -hmm. And they 
keep them in their shelter and they try their best to rehome them. Right. So Angels Among Us is the name of that. And that's so important. It's a really good program. I think we have two Angels Among Us. All volunteers, us, yeah. We? You got River and I got Ellie Mae and they're both being so good. And they're they don't so charge precious. much for adoption fees either. And if they can even waive it, because if you can't afford to pay it, mm -hmm. then they will. Mm -hmm. If you mm -hmm. can give the dog a good home. You know, you know, that's one of the things about Dr. Mitchell. He will work with you if you have to make payments, if oh, you can, yeah. whatever you have to do. And, and that he's such a blessing to the community. So um, everybody say a prayer for all the all the shelters that are full of, and a lot of them are no-kill shelters, but sadly there will be a lot of dogs put to death today. Yep. And when we think about that, you know, they could be somebody's forever forever friend, forever family, forever pet, right. and all you got to do is pick up the phone and, and try to adopt. And if you can, do it. Do it. Do, oh, it, yeah. do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. So we got to give them all Dr. the love Mitchell. you got. So, well, we're going to take a commercial break, and when I come back, I'm going to do the birthdays right quick. And my buddy, Paul Kiker, is here. He's going to join me, as always, the first Thursday of the month. We're going to say the, the show went to the dogs in the beginning, and now we're going to go to the dollars. So we're going from dogs to dollars. <laughs> Sounds like a winner to me. We're going to take a commercial break. I'll be back shortly. <laughs> You have never been so happy Dancing, swinging, laughing at me Smile on my face It's happiness for days Uh-oh You are everything I need Happy ever after will be Couldn't even dream a better Couldn't even dream a better way Whether it's memories of your first trip to the local Dairy Queen or your daily visit for a $5 lunch special, the Jasper Dairy Queen has been a part of the community for over 40 years. Locally owned and operated, Jasper DQ is the place where specialty items often become favorites. Burgers, shakes, chicken tenders with yummy dip and gravy, and don't forget the rings and fries. Celebration cakes are always fresh and fast and include the awesome blizzard cake. Stop by where folks are always meeting and eating. 515 at Highway 53. Just follow the crowd to the Dairy Queen. Fountain Roofing has been providing excellent service for 35 years. Let Lonnie assist you in choosing the roof perfect for your home and your budget. Commercial or residential, he can handle it all. Fountain Roofing continues to provide quality workmanship and will provide references upon request. At Fountain Roofing, we've got you covered. Call Lonnie at 706-692-6997. That's 706-692-6997. Since 1962, Gilmer Towing has been serving the North Georgia area and would like to say thanks to all of our customers. For over 48 years, Gilmer Towing has carried on a family tradition with an experienced and friendly staff that offers 24-hour damage-free towing, unlocks, and four-wheel drive recovery. So when you're stuck in a ditch, tires flat, or car won't start, give us a call. Local or long hauls, big or small, Gilmer Towing will get them all. Give us a call today at 706-636-4TOW. In today's changing world, some things should never change. Time-honored, compassionate services are what families have come to know with Roper Funeral Home. Our professional and courteous staff offers traditional services, cremations, as well as advanced funeral planning, which relieves the burden from those we love. Hello, I'm Kevin Roper. If you have any questions about the services we provide, we invite you to give us a call, stop by, or better yet, ask a family who has used our services. We've had Alpha Insurance since our first daughter. And when we had quadruplets, <laughs> we really needed Alpha. Now we need our own insurance with great rates, fast claim service, and a local agent we know. And we want to company our kids and grandkids can trust. <laughs> Call Alpha! The best agents in the business. Call Ed Stepp in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center in Canton specializes in low-level pain management. We provide a holistic approach to treatment, managing knee, back, and joint pain along with migraines, allergies, and medical weight loss through holistic and alternative approaches rather than pharmaceutical treatments. By offering multiple specialties under one roof, including chiropractic care and neuropathy injection treatment, we create the continuity of care that assures positive patient outcomes. So take the first step to a life free of pain. Give us a call or go online today to GeorgiaMTC.com. We are back on ETC, and my buddy Paul Kiker is joining me, and we're going to talk dollars in a few minutes, but right now we're going to talk birthdays and candles. 
because some of you are very young and some of you are much older. And and I gotta say, I was up till about 12.30 last night watching videos when I was much younger and I'm like, oh my gosh, that was 30 something years ago. Keep your friends close, take care of them, treasure them. And, and I was looking at the videos last night and I thought about, Carolyn Garrison and I used to walk our dogs every day. We had Rottweilers. Our Rottweilers didn't even get along, but we did, <laughs> so we walked our dogs. It made sense to us, Paul. Yeah. And, and I thought about, she moved to Mississippi for a while, to help take care of her parents because that's what we will all become. We all become caretakers. I can't see you taking care of your daddy. I can see his daddy taking care of the world. <laughs> yeah. I can't see you taking care of your daddy. <laughs> but we are going to do birthdays right quick. And my first birthday, very, very special one to a beautiful, beautiful young lady over in Germany, Miss Elizabeth. And Elizabeth, I would not try your last name for $2,000 today. Happy birthday, Elizabeth. <laughs> to Robin Sheffield, happy birthday. Cliff Patton, Andrew Westmoreland, April Adkins, Linda Jones, Carrie Angle, Diane Cornett, Christina Evans, Lisa Thomason, David Teague, Joanne Dorsey, James Hightower, and Barbara Butterworth. Some of those are tomorrow birthdays because we're not here tomorrow. <laughs> now, you're here today because once a month you come and visit and we like to share some good news. And I, I, I'm just going to be honest with you. This month, I'm not feeling the good news because <laughs> we've elected all these people to go to Washington and they still can't get along. Well, you think that they would be <laughs> interested in getting something done. They still can't get along. No. I want to. Are you getting angry? Because I watch the TV and I am like, idiot, idiot, yeah. idiot. And one one person who talked for 13 hours, I believe it was, or 15 hours, wow. the other day on TV, on uh, messaging and trying to stop things from happening. I just thought I understand now why people do get angry. Yes. Because they're just sitting up there doing nothing, and they're going to do this and they're going to do that. And, and I'm like get it together people the world is feeling better I'm getting calls on real estate I'm listening to people who are saying I think we're ready to take that step to buy a home yes I think I'm thinking about retirement and planning for the future now people are thinking better and then we turn on the TV and we see those clowns in Washington oh yeah it's ridiculous and the worst part it's crazy. is <laughs> the worst part is, is the markets have moved on the hope the hope that Trump's going to be able to get some things done. Now, the problem that we're going to run into is, you know, it's kind of that escape velocity. The markets are moving, but until our politicians start working together, you know, they're talking about they couldn't get Obamacare fixed. They're talking and I about. I didn't even read that whole package, but I do. I trust Vicky a bunch, and she's mm -hmm. she has a lot of time on her hands, so she really pays attention to what's going on. She said it really wasn't the proper package; that there were things about it that need to be right. changed, that we do need to replace Obamacare. Yes. And I will tell you, there was a lady sitting out in the car here. I spent hours, days, months trying to get her own mm -hmm. Obamacare, forget it, because she didn't make enough money. She was like $3,000 below what she needed to make. And I said, so what you want her to do, die? Right. And basically they said, well, I'm sorry, we can't help her. And they said, well, does she have any dependent children? I said, no, she's raised her children. Give her some help. And they said, well, try Medicaid. I said, lady, we tried Medicaid before we came to you. Yeah. And it's just a vicious cycle of people who need it, didn't get it. People who got it have huge deductibles and then other people are paying the price because their premiums skyrocketed. Have you seen people whose whose family oh, yeah. plans it, are over two thousand dollars a month now? Oh yeah, two thousand yeah, dollars a month. Absolutely ridiculous. It's crazy. It's and, crazy. So uh, it needs to be fixed. It needs to be thrown out, repealed, stomped, burned, whatever you have to do to it. But we need to replace it with better. Well, here's the problem that we have right now. We we've, we've got a bunch of narcissistic individuals that are in politics. And you know they they want it my way. I want to be They're the one who gets credit. I want to be get credit. What's right for the American people? I could care less, Mr. Politician. What's right for you? Because mm -hmm. if you're doing what's right for us as the American people, then we're going to be okay. Yeah. But the problem is, is we want ours this way. We want ours this way, and nobody wants to work together. And the American citizen is being crushed. We'll the average price. American citizen yeah. is being crushed. Yeah. And you've got you've got that, you've got tax reform, you've got infrastructure stimulus, so you've got these markets that have levitated with the hope that these things are gonna get done. The economy's starting to get a little bit better, especially our area is starting to feel what's been taking place in other parts of the country. Mm -hmm. So we're a little late to the game, but it's nice that we're participating. Mm -hmm. 
but at the same time, if they can't get these things done, that hope is going to fade, mm -hmm. and it's going to turn to anger, and you know, it's not necessarily. Then everybody's going to feel like me. Shoot the TV. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I've yeah. been so angry with these people who have had over a hundred days yes. to get things done, yes. and they're sitting there scratching their head, and I'm like, oh my gosh. But it's it's like Game of Thrones taking place in politics. You know, nobody wants to do anything but what's best for them. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you know what, guys, you're letting the average American hang out there, and that's who we work with. And I fully understand now why people who care about helping people don't end up in politics. Yes, yeah. And business people don't end up <laughs> in politics because of the fact that even if you get there, I mean, I can only imagine how uh, Trump as a business person is feeling right now. Yeah, because he can put the deal together. You're used to getting things done. You're yeah. used to being surrounded by people who are working together. Together. Isn't that amazing that we're together. working together, together towards a common goal? Well, in this case, it's like herding cats with our politicians. You've got, mm -hmm. and I'm a political atheist. I've told you all that time and time again. I'm an American. Yeah, okay? you're I, right. I, I believe in. And that's I serve, all that matters is what's best for everybody. I serve individuals. I want what's best for this country <laughs> first. Mm -hmm. So, but you've got the Democrats that are over here. We want our way. You got the Republicans that we want our way. And I'm not going to help you because it may make you look good, and I'm not going to help you. Come on, guys. You know, at it's some crazy. point, it's crazy. at some point, if they can't get this worked out, then this optimism is going to turn into pessimism. The mm -hmm. markets are going to come apart, mm -hmm. and the economy is going to come apart, and and there's no telling what the American populace is going to do when you look at all this hope that's been generated. That pendulum swings from hope. Hey, we're going to get things done. And then all of a sudden, these guys don't care about us. What do you think is going to take place? Mm -hmm. It's very scary. The face of our country is going to change dramatically. Yeah. But yeah. let's hope it doesn't come to that. Yeah, let's hope that somebody gets it together. And and I, everybody knows, I mean, this is no secret, for years and years and years, I've been madly in love with Sean Hannity's attitude. I love how he takes care of business, and I like him personally. Um, I don't like a lot of things that have happened in the media, I don't watch certain channels. I don't, you know, and and if you sat down, if I wrote down my life and what I'm spending on insurance today, and what my bottom line is, you would, you'd feel so bad for me. You would feel so bad for me. I'm over the age. I get the Medicare help, but I have to have a supplement, and everything costs money. I'm in that bracket that I had to pay for prescription care, although I don't get prescriptions. But the government dictates that you have prescription care. So out of my meager, tiny budget that I really have to watch every cent on, they're taking money from me out of the Medicare fund. I, have, I lose part of my check for that. And then they penalized me for the rest of my life because the first year I stood up and refused to take that stupid prescription thing. I don't take prescriptions, so why should I pay $40 a month for that or even $20 a month or whatever deals you got going on out there? I don't care what the deal is. Why force me to take something I don't want? Why not do a package that includes everything and it's affordable? And that's what's happening because I look at my end of the month and by the time the insurance, the insurance, the insurance is there ain't nothing left. Right. And and that's crazy because it means that at my age, I'll be working until I fall over dead. Well, and I, I mean, that's what I do is I work with retirees. I'm intimately involved in what Bless they do. Bless your heart. Yeah. Oh, it's it's just... It's because just, you're seeing people struggle in retirement. It's heartbreaking. Yeah. It's heartbreaking. And it's heartbreaking because even people who've planned well, mm -hmm. not great, but people who plan well are really struggling because sure. of because of political decisions that do more to support corporations than they do individuals. Yeah, yeah. But and and, and guys, for those of you who don't believe that Democrats are that way, it's that way. For those it's of you who way. don't believe Republicans are that way, it's that way. That way. I'll challenge <laughs> you this: follow the truth wherever it takes you, and yep. have the courage to face it, and yep. your eyes will be open. Yep. The problem we have now is most people don't think. They don't sit down and go, okay, they, t they tell me this. Let me question that. Let, let me go look at the data. Let me do a little bit of research. Let me think for myself and use critical thinking skills. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if people take the time to do that, <coughs> turn off the TV for a little bit, do a little bit of research. Information's a commodity now. It's at your fingertips. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
then you know you can you can come closer to finding out the truth. Yeah. The problem is, is there's so many people that are lying out there on this extreme and that extreme. Yeah. It's really hard to find the truth now. Well, you know, the big deal is all these people, and I'm for term limits. I don't care who it is. I am too. I don't care if it's the president, the governor. I don't care who it is. I think a term limit. I think you can't get anything done your first term because you don't have the respect of the people you're right. working with. I think you need two terms. I think three term limit. That's it. That's, That's it. it. You got 12 years out of me and you are done and that yep. is all you're going to get. You got, you know, three terms, whether it be two, four, six, or 12. I don't care. If you can't get it done in three terms, and I do not believe, and I will stand on this till I fall over dead, that anybody in Congress or Senate should leave with the huge retirements they leave with. I think that by the time we've paid them this massive scale, they've already got their Social Security coming in. Let on Social Security like we do. Let them well, live on the Social Security like we do. Yeah, okay. You're going to be shocked that I might disagree with you on that. You think they should get a retirement? I think they should get a retirement. Here's the reason why. After 12 years, I'm yeah. surprised. Here's the reason why. You need to remove the temptation for corporations to be able to buy these individuals. Okay. It, ha it happens anyway. I understand that okay? because it is a it is a pay here, play here game. Yes. Yes. And, yes. and you I think about that. it like You're in my right. case, my case, I would never go into a political arena because I love what I do. Mm -hmm. But if my kids were out of the house, and this is such chaos that we've seen in our country, and if I think I can make a difference, I'll mm -hmm. go. Mm -hmm. But think about the career that I've spent a life building right. something. You're giving that up. And you're giving that up. So so I would I would want them to be incentivized. Now, not grossly so. Now, I think their health care package should be the same as the average American. Yeah. But yeah. I do think that they should have some type of retirement for two benefits. Number one, they're walking away from if, if they're the right people that we want, then mm -hmm. they're they're the top of their careers. They're the top of their industries. Mm -hmm. We want that talent to go in there and if they stay in the corporate world, then they may be compensated. Well, you would think politicians now seem to make billions, but um, off of their site. I better stop. Speaking, speaking engagements, and that's a whole other thing. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they're it's, making it's a ticket. mega massive dollars yeah. for it coming used to out. Not be that and, way. No, oh my gosh, no, it it's used, crazy. But there was yeah. integrity in the system then, and exactly. the American people had, were willing to stand up. I think because we questioned things back then. Yeah, they questioned things. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, my goodness, you had a whole generation that went to war, and they saw massive amounts of death. We've got a generation now that's had nothing but prosperity. Mm -hmm. They're not thick-skinned. They don't understand the reality of what a global war would look like and the pain that's associated with that. You had a whole generation, the greatest generation coming out there that said, look, I've seen my, my friends, my family, my loved ones die for the mm -hmm. case of freedom, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to let us get in a situation where that happens again. That generation is gone. Right. So now you got another generation who just doesn't understand what they went through. I'm gonna throw in something else. They don't care either. And they they don't. don't care either. If 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 they truly cared and and knew U.S. history and knew world history, would understand that we have a debt forever. Yeah. We have a debt forever, and and this this generation going on right now. Yeah, and I've even gone so far as to say poor old Martin Luther King has wore himself out wallowing in his grave because he was a great man who expected greatness from everybody. Yeah. We are not getting it. Yeah. We are not getting it. We don't get along. We fight. We are, we are raising men who will kill you for $20. Yeah. We are raising people who just don't have the standards that Martin Luther King had here on earth when he was here and how many years? 49 years ago. 49 years ago, things were very different. Were you born 49 years ago? You weren't. Why are you? I'll be 43 no. this year. Okay. So you didn't even know. He was a great man. Yes. <clears throat> he is so disappointed today. I guarantee you. He has worried and struggled over what has happened to the world that he really wanted to see come to peace and come to terms. And, you know, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. And, and you're raising this next generation. I think you're, you're three could make a difference. I hope I so. I think your three could make a difference because you've you've laid that groundwork. Yeah. Well, we had a comp it's interesting because one of the things I'm quick to do is take the kids' phones away when they when their uh, attitudes are out of line. And and I know they're not perfect. They've made some mistakes. They're going to continue to make mistakes, but it's like Katie was talking to Holly the other day. She's like, 
I'm trying so hard. It's stressful to try to do what's right, you know, because but I've been too hard on her basically, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and she thinks that I because I'm, you expect too much. Yeah, well, I probably do, and I, I recognize that, but I try to. But you know, it's in. Her. I still want you know to be loving. I mean, she, she went from being like we talked every day to hitting puberty, becoming a young woman, and all at once, and I'm like, what happened to my kid? Yeah, I'm sure y'all can relate to that. Yeah, but it was interesting the conversation she was having with Holly was she's like. You don't understand how hard it is to try to to live the way that Dad and Christ expect me to live. She said it's stressful because mm -hmm. one day I came home and I just just really had one of those days where I was just emotionally shot and I snapped at her. And Holly's like, he had a bad day, and Kay's like, but I had a bad day too. Yeah, you don't yeah. understand what I went through, and, yeah. and it's. It's heartbreaking what kids are facing, what they're tempted with, what's at their fingertips. It's like the whole world wants them to be instant, uh, have instant gratification. And guys, here's the thing. I want to tell you right now, you can't build wealth. You can't do it in instant gratification. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Oh, you can go buy a lottery ticket and win $100 million, but I'm going to tell you, if you don't know how to manage money, it'll be the worst okay. thing that'll ever happen yeah, in your life. Yeah. I mean, you go, go look at the statistics. <clears throat> So we're missing character development. I mean, even in the school system right now, mm -hmm. did you know that if you have a test on Friday and you don't take it, that you can take it again before the semester's over? Mm -mm. Oh yeah. Did you know that if you take that test on Friday and you do bad on that test, you can you get another shot. You can retake it again. Well, that didn't happen when I was there. No. No. And it's like I was telling you prepare you do it and you yeah. do your best and and you put all your effort into yeah. it yeah so Kel's the type of kid that's going to take advantage of that my oldest i would have been the type of kid probably that took advantage of that but you know it's like i went to a couple of teachers and i'm like look i'm more interested in training my kids to be successful in the world i said you show up an employee for me and I tell them a deadline is due on Friday mm -hmm. and they go, I wanted to go play with my friends. I'll get to it next week. You're fired. Yeah. I said, You're, we're not yeah. training. And now, yeah. I, I have no idea why that policy is in place, but that's one of the things that we're facing. Well, if you're if everybody's out with the flu and you can't take the test right. on Friday, there I you go. That. You've got an excuse. I understand that. If, if you're grandfather passes away on Thursday night and you're at the funeral home, you can retake the test. Right. But if you stayed out Thursday night partying and you woke up not feeling too well on Friday morning and you think you can't take the test and do well because you can't focus, that's no excuse. Oh yeah, I mean, I, we, we, when I found out about it, we, we got on to Kel about something. His mom's like, do you realize he has five zeros in his class? Wow. And I said, of course, you know, ten years ago I'd probably rip the door off the front end. <laughs> But by the time, by the time my blood pressure goes to the point that I didn't have a heart attack and I come back down and, and calm down, you know, I'm, I've got a very quick temper. So I sit down and I'm like, son, what, what are you thinking? And just with the utmost arrogance, it's like, oh, dad, it's no big deal. I can do it at any time. I'll do it before the semester's over. Wow. And see, I have to get you, it taken care of. You'll do I what? I have to do it not to think about it. I know. You know? Well, I thought he was lying. I said, you're lying to me. That's not the way they're doing it in the school system. I said, that's absurd. Yeah, yeah. So I schedule a meeting with the teacher, and guess who looks like the fool? And your son is right. <laughs> yeah, he, he was right. And I'm still arguing. I'm like, tell me in what world does this make sense? It doesn't. And I still don't understand the know, policy behind what it. You're talking about showing up for work on Friday when your presentation is supposed to be there. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like I had, I, I took an order years and years ago and it was like $12,347,000 and I gave them a three week, I said, I can meet your three week deadline. I didn't think I could do that. I absolutely did not think I could do that, but that's what they wanted. And I said, I'm going to do this. And my help looked at me like, you are a crazy, wild idiot. We can't do this. We met the deadline. You know why? Because we had to. Because you had to. We had to. You got we creative. We had to or I would solved. lose a million dollars worth of business the next mm -hmm. year. So why wouldn't I meet the deadline? Yeah. Although I created it myself and it was an impossible deadline. Right. We met the deadline. We finished at 3 a.m. and that truck left for Nashville and it was done. Right. Because I had to. 
It's a different world today. Well, I mean, that's the way I, we are. I mean, the, now the financial markets are a little frustrating because somebody can give you a deadline and you're you're dealing with things that you can't necessarily hit that deadline. Right. But if I have something I can control, right? I mean, I remember I used to cram for tests. I was the type that would, you know, pay attention, but I'd pull all nighters the night before a test. And I have I'd to do that or I don't test well. Yeah. Really? I have to have it fresh, so I have to cram, and I would go in and lock my doors and tell my children, don't speak to me, don't ask for food, don't talk to mm -hmm. me, answer the phone. If your daddy comes in here fixing some cornflakes, I don't want to hear from nobody. <laughs> and I go in there and study. And right. then I do well with tests. But some people don't test well. Yeah, and some people, some people learn to deal with that at the last minute. Some people do it a little bit uh, as they go along. I didn't retain it. I had to really rethink it. I can know? retain it. I was just too, I, I, at water skiing and work and school and, you know, I was just, oh, let's go do this. Yeah, let's go do this. Fun. I got time to do it and I'd be like, <laughs> Tomorrow I gotta do that. I know I can learn it tonight. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I learned it, but then you'd hit it. So, yeah, but gosh. you know, kids don't have to do that today. So they're they're not learning that pressure. Now, we're, I, we're trying I'm to shelter them too in what much. Was the, what was the answer to the policy when you said, why are you giving them all these chances to do this? Because to me, taking the test when that quarter and that test and that subject is important to me. Because I don't want to have to go back and refresh. I want to take it and get it over with. Right. It's kind of like. Let's get it done. Let's get her done. I may be the reason get her done came about because I had to get her done or I'd forget right. it. Right. So I, you know, as bad as I hate to say it, I can't I can't remember exactly what the policy behind it was. And if it was you and I'd speculate, but I hate to speculate on live TV. Right, and right. I can't remember if it was a funding issue from the school at the state. If that was mandated, <laughs> probably, if probably. it was mandated to come down, you know, the the one argument that was thrown up to me is like, well, well, some kids have a harder time; they they learn at a different pace than others. I said, okay, then know who those kids are and give them the exception, but not everybody. Well, right. then that borderlines on discrimination. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like yeah. you can argue yourself yeah. in circles all day. Yeah. I have I have something on my uh, computer screen that says, trust him, trust yes, God. Yes. And reality is what reality is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't have blonde hair. Yeah, yeah. I don't weigh 120. <laughs> <laughs> and that's reality. But, but you know, the I guess the problem is, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I can't tell you why. I know that I did spend a lot of time talking to administration and talking to individuals, and, and it's something that, that I don't think they have the power to change. So did you lay down the law to your child and say, when the test is presented, you pass the test? Yeah, I went to the, I went to several of the teachers there. Until he got in the habit of doing it, I went to the teachers and I said, look, okay, I understand everybody else is this, but will you do me a favor? This is my son. This I don't is my care. household. I don't care. I mean, don't get me wrong, I do. But I don't care if my son fails the 10th grade. I do. Yes, okay. I know you do. My I point, know he does. I do. My <laughs> point is, I would rather him fail the 10th grade and learn character Mm -hmm. than to pass and mm -hmm. go into the world that's that's going to chew you up and spit you out mm -hmm. without the skills necessary mm -hmm. to be the best that you can be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's like I tell my kids, you do the best that you can do before the Lord because you're going to meet Him one day. That's right. It's not about making money. It's not about doing that. I don't care if you're sweeping a broom. You do it to the best of your ability. Yeah. And now, if and nobody I, sees it, you know you did your best. Exactly. And I know this about you. You would be, and I've seen this on Facebook a lot, you would be as kind to the janitor at McDonald's as you would be to the CEO of Coca-Cola. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I understand that about you, and I understand that's how life really is, because when you get there, he doesn't care who you were nice to. He no. cares that you were nice to everybody. I mean, that's the thing. It's like I tell my kids, I'm like, I don't care what circumstances somebody came from. I don't care what uh, how much or how little they have in a lot of ways the person that's worth a hundred million is uh, struggles to be a darker person than the person who's just barely getting by in a lot mm -hmm. of cases mm -hmm. I said because God created us all and we have different roles to play and I said some people get breaks and they end up there and some people have everything go bad for them they're here I said but you pay attention to who the person is not what they have mm -hmm. Now, there are people who have nothing mm -hmm. that will steal you blind. Right. You set a barrier around that That's person. Right. That's right. But if God gives you the opportunity to be a blessing to them, you still do, but you don't yeah. enable them. Yeah, yeah. If a person up here don't ever worship the money, don't think, oh, my gosh, they're success. You know, they've made $10 million a year. Mm -hmm. They're incredible. Mm -hmm. 
yes, they've got some skills and they got there, but life's doors opened up the opportunity. Exactly. They have skills you can learn from. You can learn from everybody and treat them with kindness because mm -hmm. one day you're going to meet the Lord. Mm -hmm. And you don't know whether you being kind to that person or being challenging to this person mm -hmm. may not have been what you needed to help turn them into the individuals that God created them to be or help shape them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, because I know people shape me all the time, good and bad. You know, it, I I ended up in a in a in just weird circumstances and weird things happened to me and and I just was like okay Lord what have I done wrong what what are you what are you testing me with and and then last night I was watching old videos and you would love this because we thought all these were gone and we were just really stressing over found a video of Tori down at her dad Siggy's Siggy's mom's house she was like two and a half three years old playing in the little swimming pool and it just it brought me back to you know, they were young, they got married young, they raised this little daughter, she's now 29 years old, and, and to see that young little couple, Siggy was the deciding factor to make it successful, because he was straight and narrow, he walked he that straight and narrow path, and thank God my granddaughter picked up on him, and then my daughter, <clears throat> who had a heart of gold, and would stop and help a hobo, a homeless person, a somebody who just looked horrible and terrible. She had the good things to give. They both had and it worked together. He didn't always see her way and she never always saw his way. But together, if you can help everybody, it doesn't matter where they came from, what they are, what they do. His mom being out of the um, war-torn Germany, she, when she died, she probably had 150 bottles of mayonnaise. Anytime it was on sale, she bought mayonnaise. Anytime this was on sale, she bought it. She had cases and cases, and Siggy laughed about it. He said, all this stuff is out of date. Yeah. But he learned from his mom <clears throat> to be structured, to be disciplined, and, and he taught my granddaughter this. And as she left for Alaska, and we're all just, I'm stressing, and we're all saying goodbye, and da-da-da-da-da, and I thought, she will make it because of the grounding from her father. She will excel because of the sweetness of her mother. So it's the combination. Now, you being the strong, tough one, are your children getting the good stuff from your, your wife, Holly? Are they also picking up on her when dad yes. kind of is tough on them? Yes. Is Holly grounding them too? It's like Kel. You know, one of the things, one of the weaknesses of my personality is the fact that I tend to be aggressive because... Because that's a strength and a weakness. Like I was studying that's something me. the other day. Yeah. That yeah. Your greatest strength when you become stressed is also your greatest mm -hmm. weakness. Yeah. So my aggression it. tends to be there. Holly's very laid back. We balance each other out real well. And I admire my kids because there's times where I have learned the hard way over time to seek God. And if I take the time to seek Him and seek wisdom, then usually I'll handle it right. But, you know. I'm in a hurry to get somewhere, and you go 45 miles an hour in the in the you fast know fast lane, lane and yeah. in the slow lane. Yeah. If you could hear my thought process, you'd go, "That guy is the most ungodly person <laughs> I've ever met in my life." So, uh -oh. um, so yeah, uh, yeah, they do. But it's kind of like the same time. These are conversations that happened in our house when Kel was probably a sophomore. He was talking about a kid that was disabled that some of the boys at school were picking on. And I said, I'm going to tell you something. When you go to school tomorrow, you break their noses. And I mean, I will gladly go pick you up. I mm -hmm. said, because this kid can't stand up for himself. Right. I said, you have the <laughs> gifted capability to do it. I said, I don't care if they kick your rear end. You beat them to a pulp tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you I'm sound sorry. like me. No, no, you sound like me. Yeah. So mama comes in and mama's like, your daddy's angry right now. Because <laughs> stuff like that does bother me. Yes. I mean, I'll yes. clean, crank, I'll, I'll go stand up for somebody that can't stand up for themselves if, if I see something going on. Right. But anyway, so mama kind of balances that out. Kel goes to school and he's like, guys, look, you know, this isn't right. It's you know? not, yeah. So with mama being balanced in there, if it had been me, I'd shown up the day, the next day, you know. <laughs> Says here, son, I'll sign you. Where I, I am now. now. <laughs> but uh, so, so, yeah, they got that. They're, they're so blessed that they take after their mother much more than me. 
12, but, but, but what wisdom you've instilled in them. And we're going to talk money. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk money because the money market right now is doing some, um, some good stuff, bad stuff, crazy stuff, wild stuff. Is it a time to invest? And if you haven't ever before, is right now time to jump in? It's a we're wonderful gonna, question. We're going to talk about that when we come back in just a couple of minutes. Right now. With speeds up to 150 meg, ETC and Ignite delivers more, more, more. More shopping, more music, more learning, more streaming. More speed to power smartphones, movies, and streaming video. More speed for more devices in your home. And more room in your budget with ETC's low pricing and bundled discounts. Get the fastest internet around with Ignite's new 150 meg. More speed, more savings. Call ETC today. Proverbs 4.26 states, Ponder the path of your feet, then all your ways will be sure. Too often investors are looking for instant gratification or some secret formula for success. The prudent, however, have pondered the path of their money, invested with a vision, and based upon a plan that drives the selection of their investments. We believe the prudent approach is to have a strategy and patiently work towards your goals. Give us the opportunity to compete for your business, because at Kiker Wealth Management, the wisdom is in the planning. I'm Lauren Smith, the University of Georgia. Today we have John Davis, former Georgia Tech All-American, Frank Ross, captain of the Bulldogs 1980 National Championship team in a Subway showdown. Subway. How many Subways does that Singleton own? He just up with number 17. He started in my hometown of LJ. Yeah, but he graduated from the University of Georgia. Oh. Hey guys, who's hungry? It looks like Subway and Singleton Food Services Incorporated the winner again. Subway. Chevy runs deep in Canton at Bill Holt Chevrolet. Deeper selection, deeper discounts, and we're letting everybody know it. Not just Chevy buyers in Atlanta. Chevy buyers in Blairsville, Blue Ridge, Jasper, and Ella J. If you're out there, we're right here with one huge selection at Truck HQ. Always get our lowest prices and friendliest service. Online, BillHoltGM.com. Because when you're talking trucks, you're talking Truck HQ. At Blue Ridge Dermatology, we believe your skin is vital to your health. That's why each of our providers gives personalized treatment recommendations. Let Dr. Mills do a thorough exam. He specializes in all skin conditions. Jamie Savageau is our nurse practitioner who specializes in skin disease. And our physician's assistant, Patrick Martin, is a certified injector for facial rejuvenation. Our certified laser technician, Donna Atosco, performs laser procedures with the latest gold standard equipment. Susan Newton is our medical esthetician. She specializes in chemical peels and skin tightening. Let one of the staff at Blue Ridge Dermatology help you look and feel your best. When Mike leaves town, it's a little scary. You never know who might be outside. But we feel safer inside knowing our home is being monitored by a local company. I can check our alarm from just about anywhere. So when we get home, I know it's safe. Get peace of mind for your family with a local company. Switch your current security monitoring to ETC Security and get six months monitoring free. Call ETC Security now or visit etcsecurity.com to learn more. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. We're back. Okay, Paul. Today, let's let's talk about um, if you have investments that you're not happy with, what would you do with them right now? Would you write it out? Tell me what new investor and somebody who has some old money, the two things you'd do with those. Okay. Uh, are we coming back to that real estate question? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, the question being if somebody had some real estate that they were going to sell. I, I'll tell you this. Um, we, we follow a strict strategy. And the rules of our strategy tell us that it's time to be growth oriented after being pretty defensive for a period of time and missing a little bit of opportunity. Mm -hmm. Now because I'm, I spend a tremendous amount of time on research and, and chasing the truth, I will tell you, we're in the middle of a grand experiment in these markets. Mm -hmm. And five years from now, the passive index buyer, I don't think is going to be the number one place to be. That has been the number one place to be, but I don't think that's going to be the case. Um, if we can't get this economy going and our politicians start working together, we've got so much debt, 
we've got people that are so struggling. We've got a pension crisis that is just on the verge of blowing up. I mean, imagine if if, if these corporate pensions start going pop. Mm -hmm. and a lot of it has to do is they follow strategies that, and they stay fully invested. They just haven't performed as good in a properly diversified portfolio as what the U.S. indexes have been. You know, you as an investor look at the U.S. index and you go, wow, it's been great. A lot of your international indexes are at 2010, 2011 levels, so it's been quite unusual. But the question would be, is is what would somebody do? So if you're new to the markets right now, I would take my time, okay, if you're trying to get into these equity markets, we're at all-time highs, but understand that doesn't mean that the Dow can't be 40,000 10 years from now mm -hmm. or 30,000 three years from now. It also doesn't mean because we've been good that we can't be at 10,000 three years from now, okay? Our economy is so, we've been running right along the edge for so long, kind of playing chicken with everything, that that there's a lot of gambling take place. There's a lot of belief that this is, you know, the next get rich quick scheme. I'm concerned about the debt. I think we're in the middle of a debt bubble. Mm -hmm. We might get out of it and we might not. But the reality is I would take the time to sit down. I'd talk to somebody who's a risk manager. I'd talk to somebody who's a passive investor. And I wouldn't talk about returns. Okay, returns will come over time. I mean, I'd look at, if, you, if they have historical returns, maybe look at them to see the strengths and weaknesses of a strategy. How, well, how did it operate in 2008? Okay, if I'm gonna go into this, could I lose 40%? If that's the case, am I willing to stay through it? If you're willing to stay through those periods of time, 10, 15, 20 years from now, you're gonna be okay. Mm -hmm. In a risk managed strategy, okay, if it might have done good in a 2008, 2009, when does it do bad and am I willing to accept that? But pick a strategy. The strategy is the single most important decision that you can make in the investment process. You might get lucky and pick a Home Depot. I've got a couple of investments right now that I think will be the next Home Depots. But but you understand, I said, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't exactly. know. Exactly, yeah. And there's a lot of things that can change. So you've got to develop a plan. You've got to develop a strategy. You've got to understand where you're going and set up those expectations. And for the people who are willing to do that, they'll be successful. Mm -hmm. They will be. I don't know if that means 3% a year returns 10 years from now is successful or if that means 20% of your returns 10 years from now is successful. There's a lot of things that are outside of our area of control. What if we end up with war in North Korea? Mm -hmm. You know, or another global war? You still need to be able to navigate through that because there's, no, not, there's not one secret sauce in the investment process. Well, somebody was telling me that they put we put a lot of money in gold, a lot of money in silver. Okay, I've seen it up and down. I like gold and silver. Yeah, I've, I've seen people who feel very good with that. But and I don't have everything in it. No, no. If, if you I do, think that's the thing. My eggs were all in a basket. Yeah. It was the wrong basket. Here's the thing. So. If you put all your eggs in one basket, you're gambling. Yeah. You may not yeah. realize you're gambling. I might as well have yeah. shot crabs. You're, I mean, yeah. Seriously, yeah. So, I mean, like in my case, I've, I've owned Bitcoin for several years, and it's been a really good return for me. I've owned gold for quite some time, but they're all a portion of our assets. And what I'll do is if my tools tell me that I need to, that it needs to be an investment part of my portfolio, then my percentages go higher. Mm -hmm. If it tells me that I don't need to be invested into it in the short run, then I go back to my insurance. So mm -hmm. basically, it's mm -hmm. kind of like what gold is, is it's inflation insurance against your portfolio. So, you got uh, homeowner's insurance on your home, mm -hmm. and let's say it's $1,000 a year in 10 years, do you want your house to burn down? We know the answer to that. It's absolutely no, not. No, with my granny stuff in it, no. So, so in 10 <laughs> years, if you paid $10,000 yeah. in yeah. insurance, are you just furious that you didn't make any money? That my house didn't burn. I right. Collect, yeah, no. So, here's the thing. It's like when I tell, when I tell somebody, like in my case, I'm going to have a certain percentage, and I don't think I can say this on TV because it needs to be a one-on-one -on -one situation. A certain percentage of my assets are in gold and silver. Uh, uh, they're held, at, I don't hold them at my house, guys. It's held yeah. in my vault. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so don't come knocking on my door because there ain't yeah. nothing there. Yeah. But, um, but a gun. But I, <laughs> yeah. yeah. There'll be a gun, but that's about the only valuable thing I have. Yeah. We, we yeah. don't even have valuable yeah. jewelry. I mean a gun this way. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> It'll be looking at you. But um, so anyway, so the way I look at it is you have a certain portion in there against inflation insurance. I could build the argument that we're going to have a currency crisis in our lifetime. What if we had inflation like we did in Germany? Mm -hmm. Well, just like 
just like your homeowner's insurance, if your house burns down, are you better off to have insurance or not? It still stinks. Yeah. I mean, there's still yeah. things you yeah. can't replace. Yeah. 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 So, you know, yeah. but but for the people who say, I remember back in 2011 when gold was 1900 an ounce or 2012, whenever that was, uh, you know, people were just like, because it was doing good, they look back and they go, well, it's going to do that good in the future. So they put everything they had in it. And then now, four years later, it's 50% below where it was. Yeah. That's the way assets work, guys. Yeah. That's the way the markets work. Real estate, gold, stocks, bonds. And that's why you need to be diversified. I don't know. I hope. I hope that real estate might come back to where it was. Um, I have a watch on and I wore it today to remind myself, number one, the Diamond Center in Blue Ridge and in Murphy. Wonderful, wonderful people. I adore them. I adore them. And um, they reminded me, you know, when you do your insurance checkup, you need the true value yes. of, your, of anything you have. Now, because I have had somebody steal all my jewelry, if I own it, it is on my body. So the only way you're ever going to get anything for me again is to kill me and get my Take stuff. Take it off of me. Yeah, you're going to have to kill and my dead cold body will probably be holding on. But but we need to do an insurance checkup too if you do a a, a checkup on your yes what you're investing it's just like having insurance on it yes. you've got to look at it and say is this working for me and and stay with it stick there yes. and and feel comfortable and feel safe and quit getting all weird and antsy and crazy because yeah. it's going to be okay it's, it's going, going to be, be okay, okay. And, and, and and but it's hard not to panic because i will tell you I know my, it is. my industry is horrible and i'll tell you the best thing that an investor can do is turn off cnbc yeah, I don't turn that on. It, it's, I don't turn that on. It's not going to help you. No, it's I don't just turn not that because on. what mm -mm. naturally what our human tendency is is what's the first conversation? <laughs> what did the best last year? Well, if your investment didn't do the best last year, you immediately feel left out. But you got to understand the the corporate investment world is compensated. The more you churn, the more you change, the more you change advisors, the more you do all that stuff the more money that they're going to make. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. There are strategies that dictate. I mean, we, we will change when our strategy tells us to change, but you're following a strategy that's dictating that. If you're bouncing from here to here to here to here, well, I think I'll go all in gold, and that doesn't do good. I'll go all in gross stocks, and that doesn't do good. I'll go all in international, or go all in commodities. You're not diversified, mm -hmm. and you're just generating mm -hmm. revenues, and you're not making any money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I've always said, and I don't, I don't own any stock because I, like an idiot, sold my Home Depot stock at thirty-five dollars, and it's now sixty-eight, eighty, something like that. You really don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. It's, it's much more than that. It's much more than that. Yeah. I don't want to know. Shut really up. Don't wanna... <laughs> Hush your mouth. <laughs> I will not do that on live TV. I'll wait till we're off yeah, and then I'll well, tell her. Oh, I'm going to cry. Um, tell folks your phone number. It is 706-253-7285. If you are getting back a war pension this year from the government because you paid too much taxes, you're going to get a lot of money, go see Paul Kiker and invest some of that money and, and let him make it grow for you. And, and I think that's the key. Find somebody you trust. Um, sit down and talk to them. Make some sense of everything and start today. Because if you don't start today, when you get my age, you're going to be working three jobs. Yeah. I can assure you that. So. Well, I'll tell you what's neat. I'm not high pressure. Because we've I'm, got a 50 seconds. Oh, we got 50 seconds. Yeah. I'll save that for later. All right. Well, I do want people to come and talk to you because this is the time of year. After you've paid your taxes, yeah. after you've looked at your plan, you've got to really look at taking care of yourself. And you can help them do that. Yes. We'll help Thank them. you for being here today. Yay. I've got to leave you now. I'm going to go right there where Rivers, Mountains, and Good Friends meet. Going to Cornelia. I hope to see the Bridgemans. I hope that you will join folks. Food Factory up in Cornelia tonight between 5.30 and 7 o'clock. Have dinner and then at 7 o'clock they're going to hit the floor and start singing to us. Please stay safe. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. We'll see you again soon only on ETC TV 3. Don't forget, trading time comes your way this afternoon at 5 o'clock. Thank you, thank you, thank you.